I'm giving somebody the blues today. Welcome back to the channel everyone. It seems with one of my latest videos, I unintentionally reinvigorated the conversation around Josie and her controversial creation. I did a video and I was talking about her story, but also I wanted to cover a news article that was focusing on her design and how Twitter at the time reacted. The title on that video, Josie is not Filipino enough her controversial design and full story breakdown. Now, one reason why I, I was talking about this, is this is not something that I was familiar with. So not only was I learning about it myself, but I was also telling some of you who may not heard about this, what happened. But what it seems like happened in this video, I well, one, I kind of messed up. I talked about how this controversy started. All the Filipinos hate this character and it's not Filipino enough and people want to get this character removed. You have the Filipino government getting involved. But what I did not talk about is how this whole thing ended because this took place back in 2015, right? 2015 is when this discussion happened. So there's definitely some things that I left out. And the real reason why I want to do this over again is because there was a Reddit post and I kind of feel like this Reddit post is a direct, uh, not a response, but it's like a kind of like the immediate aftermath of my video. I'm going to be breaking it all down and sort of telling the full story because I only told the half of the story, the beginning of the story. So I want to get everything in this one. For those of you guys who don't know, for those of you guys who didn't see the first video, they released Josie. Well, the character actually leaked, but then the trailer came soon after. People found out that the name was Josie uh, Raza, and then also people found out she was Filipino. Now, a lot of people were kind of upset because they felt like the character wasn't an actual representation of Filipino culture. She didn't speak Filipino. And then in the wiki, it says it has a Filipino accent. But in the comment section of my video, a lot of people were saying that the actress that they had voiced Josie is just a normal white person with no Filipino accent. So they kind of just tacked that on there, kind of to just try and like save face in a way. But it was some person who represented the government. They were saying, if they could, they would stop Josie from being created. And that kind of got twisted because some people thought that that was the government saying we're going to stop this character, but really it was just one person. That's like, you know how America has Congress, right? There's so many different people in Congress. That's like one person tweeting out, oh, this Leroy character, I don't like him. And then everyone's like, oh, the U.S. government said they don't like Leroy. That's kind of how it, it spiraled. It was one person, but the statement came off as if it was the whole Filipino government, right? Looking at the comments on my video, because I think it's, uh, some are interesting. The three most popular. Josie is hated by Filipinos is BS. Most Filipinos actually support Josie. Otherwise, Harada would have deleted her from Tekken 7 like he planned. Also, Josie is top 10 in usage rate, according to Event Hubs. So clearly fabricating stuff with claiming most people hate Josie. I want to say this is fabricated. I want to say this is, because uh, this is, this is, this really happened. Josie, when she came out, when she was, uh, her trailer was shown, she was trending on Twitter. She was a big topic back then. And there was people on both sides, people who liked the character and people who don't like. I, I don't think this is fabricated or overblown at all. The next one says, Leo isn't German enough. Lars isn't Swedish, Swedish enough, King isn't Mexican enough, Lei isn't Chinese enough. And this kind of just goes back to the whole Josie is not Filipino enough. This, this person's uh, listing out other characters who falls in that same category. The final comment that I'll read from my video, in Tekken 8, they should give Josie an actual Erskum moveset with Arnis sticks. Then bring back Bruce. We don't need any more clones. We need unique characters. So that's kind of what's the general gist of my comment sections. Now, I do want to talk about some of the things that Harada said directly about this, right? Because this character was trending. Harada was a part of the discussion. One thing that happened here, it says, will you delete Josie Raza? Please don't. NCCA just want to join the hype train. 
Harada says, nah, if something happens, I will. So basically saying that the, the, the person in the government, the Filipino government, was saying that they want to try and put some sort. I don't know what they can do against the game, but he said that he wanted to do something. Whether it was boycott, whether it was restricted from being uh, playable in, in Philippines. I don't know what that government person wanted to do. And they were basically trying to pressure Harada to change the name. And he was like, no, if they want me to change the name, I'm just going to take the character out as a whole. And I kind of agree with that. If someone comes in and try to change your design, change your, your, your vision, I say just pull the whole thing. People have it confused. When he do these characters for other regions, it's him trying to include other parts of the world into Tekken. He could very easily just make Tekken all Japanese characters. They can definitely fill a whole roster with so many different types of Japanese characters and styles and whatever. So if someone wants to try and change his vision about a character, um, then I was, if I was Rada, I would just pull it. I would be like, nope, okay, I'm just gonna pull the whole character. Now, you guys can continue doing your whole Philippines things and we'll continue doing our tech things. But the next quote, NCAA is just concerned about the name. The character should not be deleted, just change the name. No, if it happens, I'll delete her. Now, I don't know what happened here. I don't know if Harada had some phone calls with these guys or, or what happened, but basically, there was a news article and there's more tweets, but it says Harada asked fans to calm down. No TRO on Josie. Um, the Philippine Culture Agency continues to be attacked by fans even after repeated clarifications regarding the non-issue. So once everyone felt like Josie was being attacked, Tekken was being attacked, people started, I don't know if they were calling the government, if they were emailing them, but the Tekken fans sort of started clapping back. And then Harada put out a tweet said, don't worry guys, calm down. One thing about this, I was not able to find the actual tweets. All of these tweets I've showed you so far are images. This is people taking a screenshot of Twitter back then. I, I don't know if these tweets was deleted or if I just cannot access them, but I was not able to find all of the tweets for myself. But it says, okay now, don't worry guys. And it's a tweet longer. I'm guessing he explains in detail what happens, but we can't see that because I wasn't able to find it. Clarification on Josie issue. Dr. Uh, Canteen's opinion is his own, not necessarily that of the entire, I'm guessing, government. No TRO has been issued on Tekken 7. Josie, the article is definitely Filipino and definitely satirical post. Thank you very much. Oh, wow. So this got so big to where the NCAA had to make a official statement because one of their members quotes got out of hand they were being flooded so hard that they had to make an official statement that is crazy when i took the screenshot i didn't even realize this was the ncaa uh tweeting this right harada responds and says back to work i'll create my life basically saying like i'm going to continue working on tekken 7 and i'm going to continue to put my vision in the game and that's what it's all about if they try to stop your vision then you gonna be like okay the character's gone then you know and now let's talk about the reddit post so if you watched the video yesterday you could have came off with the impression that josie is a horrible character and that's something that i i said in the video i said if you didn't know anything about tekken you would think josie is one of the worst characters in the game but She's not. She's one of the best, I will say. When you're talking about the new originals, the new characters where this is their first game, Josie's by far one of the best. I love her gameplay. Her gameplay, I don't play Josie, but playing against Josie is incredibly fun. And I feel like it's challenging, but it's not too challenging. There's a lot of characters that just plays themselves and they're just overpowered. I don't think Josie's overpowered, but at the same time, I think her moveset and her stances is so, is unique enough to where people can put their own twist and their own, they can kind of have fun with Josie's uh, mechanics. I love fighting Josie more than I like fighting most of the other characters on the roster, which I think that is pretty good because something that I've been saying lately, the signs of a good character to me is a character that is one good to play as and good to play against. Fakamram and Leroy Smith, 
they may be fun to play as but they're not fun to play against and i guess you could throw yoshimitsu in this same pot yoshimitsu is a extremely fun character to uh, play as and to watch but no one not even other yoshimitsu mains like playing against yoshimitsu so i guess you could throw yoshimitsu in that same mix as well but the reddit posts here are older tweets of Harada defending the success of Josie and Lucky Chloe. I'm pretty sure we'll see these two again in later games. Now, the reason why I think this is kind of a direct response to my videos, one, I, it, the video is about Josie, but throughout the video, I kept mentioning how I wanted to do Lucky Chloe uh, next. I still want to, I'm still planning on, on it, but there's other videos that's kind of taking priority right now. But looking at these tweets from Harada, how often does these kind of cases do affect the sales in certain regions slash countries? Because someone yelling stereotype or cultural appropriation sounds like a massive troll to me. I recall when people in my country got uppity when Josie was announced and they didn't even play Tekken. Harada says, your point is the exact opposite of the fact. In fact, many fans gathered for Josie. And the sales of Tekken in Philippines are the number of online matches have improved beyond comparison with the past. This is revealed by statistical data, that's all. So basically saying people can be upset on Twitter, on Reddit, on whatever, but that does not mean that the player base is gone. Here's one thing too. People who love to get upset about stuff, people who love to, you know, the, the Twitter fingers get going. These people have kind of a short attention span. They'll be upset about Josie one day, but then the next day they'll be upset about Disney not adding a, a Filipino character or whatever. Like these people, they, they jump from topic to topic to topic, just being upset about everything. The, the point is that anger will pass and once it does you will only have people who love to who love the character and who love the game that remains looking at this uh lucky chloe tweet because there's a lot to read here it feels like millions times harder to design a fighting game character than an fps character since a hundred percent of the time playing a fighting game you are looking at everything that goes into the character which is just doesn't happen on fps What's the hardest part of making a character? Fighting games, you have to go a little bit deeper and you have to go more to the roots. Harada says everything. However, the most difficult thing is to balance between play, feel, enjoyment of controlling characters, and character personality, specialized skill. It's different to adjust to a good play feel while striking specialized animations. Leroy Smith, at the moment, I'm hoping they could change this in Tekken 8. He is all design, he's all outfit, all personality, but then gameplay, it's really lackluster and it's really underwhelming. There's not really too much there for this character. Someone says, so why look at Chloe? Harada says, did you ask questions at school like that too? First of all, tell the intentions and the point of your question. Unfortunately, that's beyond your imagination. That character was successful in marketing. Don't ask me for shit. And this is the thing, this person, so why Lucky Chloe? It's like, so why Lucky Chloe what? Finish your question, finish the sentence, the statement. And then second off, Lucky Chloe is very successful. I touched on this in the past. A lot of people like to hate on Lucky Chloe, but she's also one of the most successful new characters added to Tekken 7. Out of all the new characters they added to Tekken 7, most of them are successful. They're not over, they're not super, but they're, there's only a few, probably like two or three that you can consider a failure. And Josie is not that, Lucky Chloe is not that. And don't even get me started with the DLC. As controversial as they are, they are not failures by no meaning of the word. Harada put out a tweet, I made a video about it like a year and a half ago or something like that, but basically he was saying that the regions that love Lucky Chloe the most, where her usage is the highest, is North America. I just think it's interesting, both of these characters, whether they're controversial and whether they're hated or loved or not, they definitely have a strong fan base. 
And in the past, when I did my polls for Tekken 8, I put both of them. But that's it. I just want to circle back and talk about this because I definitely think my first discussion didn't tell the complete story. And I do appreciate this tweet or, or this Reddit post. I don't know if this person watches my video. I would assume they may be either seen it or they were sent it or they are a subscriber but i do appreciate them adding to the conversation and showing these tweets because it made me realize what i didn't do in my first video right so that's it thanks for watching hopefully you enjoyed this and found it informational and also realize this conversation took place in 2015 that's so long ago right but that's it thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time bye guys